Good morning, everyone. You know, it is still, I think, very fresh in the minds and in the lives of a lot of people, the devastating effects that the floods now, just about six or seven weeks ago, had on our community and upon our state. So many people, though, rallied together to provide a service, to provide work, manpower, and goods to help those who are affected and, of course, are continuing to do so. But there's one sort of aspect of this recovery that was so crucial to the advances that we made here. As much as we as individuals or as a community wanted to or did a lot of work in order to help others, it really would have been impossible to do it without the help of international organizations such as the United Way or the Red Cross who coordinated efforts, who gathered goods and with their network of connections were able to disperse and get a lot of help to those who needed it, especially the most. And so it's something that we recognize, but maybe don't often think about, is that groups such as the United Way or the Red Cross are not for-profit organizations. They're non-profit organizations. And for them to be able to do the work that they do here and throughout the world, they depend upon the generosity of people who support their mission. Not only organizations such as the United Way or the Red Cross, but think of the different groups around the nation that raise money for cancer research, the March of Dimes, and so many other organizations that do so much good work to help those in need. These are all NPOs. They depend on gifts, donations, and generosity for their survival and the success of their work. And people give to these organizations because they see the good work that's done. They want to be a part of supporting the work and supporting such an organization. Now granted, maybe they have other motives such as tax breaks and that's fine. But still, these groups, these NPOs would not survive if it were not for the generosity of people who cared about their mission. So why do I bring this topic up? One, because of course, as I said, it's very fresh in our minds that we realize how important organizations such as this have been to help coordinate efforts in the area. And of course, they're doing it now in Haiti and throughout the East Coast, having been affected by Hurricane Matthew. But the reason I bring it up is because if we can understand that these organizations that do great work depend upon people's generosity, we can also understand that the church, parishes, but here more specifically the diocese, depends upon, in the same way, the generosity of parishioners and people who live in that geographic region to be able to support the good work that we do locally. And so that, of course, is my segue into admitting that this weekend is Bishop's Services Appeal. It's the year of mercy, so the good news is I'm not going to play the CD. Instead, I am going to talk about it. And I'm going to do my best to speak very honestly and directly about the reality of the BSA in our diocese, because I think a lot of people don't know what it is. They have no idea. They know, okay, well, it's this weekend, Mass, and Father's going to play the tape, and I'm going to zone out and think about what is, I'm going to watch for football this afternoon, or what I'm going to eat. What I want to do today is try to clearly explain what it is and why it's important. So first of all, the bishop is, of course, the head of our diocese. The diocese is this geographical region that he is sort of in control of. It goes here in southern Louisiana from St. Landry, the city in the north, down to Kai Island, in the west from Iota all the way to the east to so about Henderson. And within that space, there are about 320,000 Catholic souls that the bishop is responsible for. It's a lot of people. He can't do it by himself. So he has different organizations and offices within the diocese in a place we call the chancery that sort of coordinates and does a lot of the outreach. 
There are a number of different organizations that do this. Probably the one that we should know the most by now is the Office of Peace and Justice, headed by Deacon Ed Bustani, who really worked very hard to help coordinate efforts in the diocese to bring relief and help to those who have been impacted by the flood. But also the different services the bishop provide help to the disabled, help to minority communities in our diocese, formation of seminarians and priests, religious formation, outreach to the prison and the prison ministries, help to those who are deaf. There are so many different organizations that the bishop uses to help those in the diocese. And just like these other large organizations, whether they be the Red Cross or the March for Dimes, the American Cancer Society, the diocese is a nonprofit organization. The bishop is not the head of some big company where we can make a bunch of money and sort of self-sustain. We, like these other organizations, depend on the generosity and support of people within the diocese. And so that's why once a year the bishop has the bishop services appeal, an appeal throughout the diocese for people to be generous and support the good work that these offices, these services the bishop provides does throughout the year in the diocese. Now, I've been a priest long enough. I've heard a lot of people offer questions or critiques of this. One of the big ones is, and I'm speaking very honestly today, is, Father, I don't like giving to the BSA because it supports the diocesan bureaucracy. I want to help the poor. I want to help those in need. I don't want to help a, the expansion of bureaucracy. And I understand that. But let's be realistic. Think of the American Cancer Society. Or think of the United Way. The work that they do and the money that we give. Of course, we would love it if the money we give actually went to help that kid, that specific kid who had cancer or actually help to buy food for the person who was struggling or suffering. But the truth is, to have such a large organization, you need bureaucracy. You need administration to be able to coordinate things, to be able to organize things, to be able to take charge of communication and administration. Without that, you have a bunch of people who want to do good things, but they don't know where to go. And you know what? To be able to have that administration, you need to pay salaries, you need to pay insurance, you need to pay benefits. So a lot of the money that we give does go to administration and bureaucracy because without it, the good work on the ground is not going to get done. We need to have those people who are in charge, who have the intelligence and the will to coordinate efforts. The same thing goes in our diocese. Maybe not in the same large capacity, but if you don't have people organizing minority ministry, organizing flood relief, organizing outreach to the, the prisons, with all the prisons in our diocese, then you're going to have a bunch of lone rangers out there. Yes, so the money does go to help administration. Without administration, the work on the ground is not going to get done. That's how it works. It's sort of like a business. Now, the second question people will ask quite often is, Father, I don't want to support the work on the diocesan level. I want to support it on the parish level. I want my money to go to the parish to help what happens here. And you know what? That's very, very important. And I appreciate the generosity and the good work people give here to wisdom that helps the parish flourish, that helps our very unique ministry to the students progress and grow. But I'll be very honest, there are a lot of things that we want to do here that I could not do if I did not have the help of the services the bishop provides. Very specifically, we did some great work on the local level with the coordination of people and students and parishioners to give outreach to the people who were affected by the flood. There were so many people who stepped up with gift cards, cooking meals, clothes, diapers. And we had wonderful people who were coordinating these efforts. But there were certain people who were so impacted that their needs went above what I could provide. And so it was very good for me to have those greater resources of the diocese that I could refer them to. In that specific case, but it happens all the time. People who come and need special marriage counseling but can't afford a normal counselor, I can send them to diocese. 
people who are in need of adoption services. I can send the diocese. So many different things they offer that I simply do not have the resources to provide on a local level. The same thing when it comes to other sort of great organizations. We can do a lot of work on the local level. That's the principle of subsidiarity. But when it comes to major disasters, when it comes to the spread of diseases, often you need to be able to be sent up higher to these larger organizations that can do a lot better work because they have so much more organization and so much more resource, so many more resources. And here is sort of the, the third and the final thing that people may sort of ask when it comes to giving or when it comes to supporting the bishop's service appeal. And, and these are questions that I hear a lot. This is something that becomes very, very important when we come to understand the need to be able to give, the need to be able to support, is the fact that, hey, Father, you know what? I don't really see the impact of my gift. You know, when I go and I help the person who's suffering from cancer, or I help the person who is suffering from a flood, I can go there and when I work and I help, it makes me feel good. But when I give to the BSA or when I give to the collection, I don't see, I don't feel like I'm making a great impact as I do in the other ways. And I can completely understand that. This is a type of giving that doesn't necessarily provide warm fuzzies. But if you think of it like this, the church is not just an NPO. The church is the body of Christ. The church is the family of God. The Pope, the bishop, the priest, they're sort of like the fathers who run the family. And everybody here knows a father or a mother cannot do everything by themselves. They need to have the other members of the family pitch in in their own way. Whether it be financially or by, by doing chores, by doing all sorts of things that aren't glamorous, that don't get a lot of attention, and often quite not, don't make us feel all that great. But they need to get done or the mission of the family will simply not be achieved. And so it comes to mowing the lawn, preparing breakfast, bandaging wounds, helping the children do homework, cleaning up the tiles in the bathroom, whatever it is. We give to this because we understand the bigger mission. It's not about how it makes us feel. It goes to contribute to the good of the family. And so, yes, we have got to sort of look beyond the fact that giving to BSA or even giving in the collection isn't going to necessarily give you a great feeling. You may not see a great impact. Your money may go to pay the light bill. It may go to pay the person who comes to clean up. But we need the help and the assistance on a local level and the diocesan level from everyone. There are going to be opportunities for us to give where people recognize it and it's good and it's important. But we also be able to need to give on this daily level to be able to support the administration, to support the bishop services, and to support the growth of the diocese and the growth of the local parish. And so that's what I really sort of want to encourage everyone to be able to do, is to think in this regard. I can tell you honestly, preaching on the BSA is not my favorite thing to do. Uh, it's not something that necessarily gets me very excited or gets me very, very engaged. But there are a lot of things like that that I am not necessarily passionate about, but I know that they are important and we need to get done. There's no way for me to communicate this to make you super excited about giving. But it is something that is very, very necessary. And the bishop and his services do a lot of good throughout the diocese and on local level. And the bishop depends upon, I depend upon, the support of a good Catholic throughout the diocese to continue the growth and the proliferation of these services. Amen.